welcome back to the channel. One thing we need to get done before we go any further on this pit is we need to get a rail cap installed on the top of our pit so that we can protect our concrete. Don't do that. Uh, it's already starting to take a little bit of damage from us releasing the forms and uh, we want to put a metal rim on this so that we can sturdy up that frame, create some additional reimbursement to help support the concrete structure, and also to create some rails so that we can slide a trolley back and forth. As you can see, we have some chipping in the concrete, and this will continue to happen as we have heavy items that hit this concrete. We want to be able to have a sliding lift trolley, maybe multi-function, to be able to roll back and forth underneath the vehicle on these edge pieces of the concrete. We're gonna be using three by three angle iron. Let's get this in here, measure, and let's get started cutting. We're getting ready to weld here and uh, one thing I don't want to be doing is when I go to put this back in after we tack it up is struggling with it to be able to get it in and seat it. Angle iron is not square on the inside. There's a thicker fillet that's on the inside curve. So this is what's going to hit our square edge of our concrete. So this is why we're going to thin set this in, mortar this in to be able to create a barrier that rounds that off so it'll have equal pressure where our sharp comes to round. Like I said, I wanna have this have a little bit of float so I'm not gonna like pin this up here super tight, just tight enough that everything can kinda wiggle a little bit. by myself that I won't be able to use my big welder it will not reach so I'm gonna have to resort to using the old Harbor Freight one that I haven't used in about eight years and that's all the wire I got so I'm gonna have to make this count okay, before we weld this up uh, I just wanted to show you how straight our walls look compared to a metal straight edge All in all, it's super straight. I'm really happy with this. I don't mind leaving it a little loose. It's gonna make it a little easier to get in here and set in. Honestly, we're within about an eighth inch from being square over 12 foot, so that's really good. That was all the little Harby had left. Uh, got my three tacks. Hopefully it will hold enough for me to get this sucker up out of here and get it flat and level to weld it up. <laughs> got the frame all cleaned up uh, usually I don't like grinding welds but I really want this to be as flat as can be so I can control the elevation without any kind of weld bump sticking up and since we're gonna be stepping on this I didn't want any other little catches that's why I welded both front and back of these is so I could ground flush I 
I took some alcohol, scrubbed off the black oxide off of this, ground off any rust with the buffing pad. I think I'm ready to paint this thing, so uh, let's go to paint. <laughs> Okay, so it's 48 hours later and we're ready to drop this frame in the hole. All right, once again, I have underestimated how dry the concrete is, how not wet enough my mortar mix is, and it dried out crazy fast. I had to start over, go wetter, make it super soupy, and it was still drying out. So we got the sprinkler out, we sprinkled it. <sighs> once again, frantic, mad rush, because you have to lay 30 feet all at once, and by the time you get back around, it's drying out. <sighs> not excited about this. This was not like just doing tile, where you can keep everything close to you and just work it as you go. That stuff was setting up quick. <sighs> Should've went wetter. Should've pre-soaked everything. Definitely not enough depth on our mortar mix. Anyway, you live and you learn. So we went back and pointed everything. Got the big gaps. Super stressful. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Probably gonna have to come back and do a little bit of sanding on it. I don't wanna to touch it too much and just keep making it worse and worse and worse because it's drying out all the time. This is what I got so far. We'll come back tomorrow when this is dry and close up the video. Uh, this mortar may crack because the it's just uh, too dry. But I might take and spritz it up some more. Let it sit overnight. Hopefully that'll give it enough moisture it needs to not dry out. These end pieces, they were super deep. They were about a half inch gap there. We did the best we could, and I think it's gonna be a real good set. This is gonna be able to displace a lot of weight with this 3 8 metal, three inch wide. I think it's gonna do really good, but yeah, that was a lot of work. So the second thing we got going on is, when you put a 12 foot long straight edge on your concrete, you're gonna find out Nothing is level, nothing is flush. You're gonna find one inch dips. It was nuts. 39 and three quarter, 39 and five eighths, 39 and five eighths. We got about a one quarter inch disparity between the middle and that end. Let's take a look at our height depths. 82 and three quarter, 82 and a half, 82 and a quarter. We have about a half inch to a three quarter inch drop, but I think that that's on the floor slope, not on the top. Let's check the level. One side is about dead level, the side to side is level, and one side has about a 16th inch of a change on the level. Not quite sure how that all adds up, but I think it's gonna be really excellent and we probably need to make sure when we bring our floor plates up here that we have a way to do some shimming so that it'll look completely flush when it's at the top. Okay, so we're here back 24 hours after letting the concrete dry and uh, stuff kind of stiffened up. A little bit of wet discoloration still, but uh, everything feels solid. You can tap on the metal, no hollow spots. That's looking good. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it, but uh, we had to get this cap done before I could finish connecting my electrical because the solid ring would make it where we couldn't make our connection. We'll be getting back to our electrical install video where we'll show the lights. It will be the next video uploaded, and uh, this is what I'm talking about. I have to get this thing connected. So that's what we'll be doing. We'll be getting the lights. We'll be putting some tools down there, doing some pegboards, and uh, then we'll be moving on to... building our X-Frame. Yeah, what everybody's been waiting for, the X-Frame. And we'll start to design that. Uh, one thing I need from you guys is, do y'all have any good cost-effective ways to do pins and bushings? 
I'd like to just do a one inch pin with a greasable bushing to weld into here, but they're super hard to find how to research that on the internet. So if you have suggestions or links you can copy in the comments, I'd appreciate it. I'm thinking about either doing some heavy duty casters for these to roll on, or maybe just finding some bearings that have a one inch inside diameter and like a two inch outside and just putting a piece of pipe on the outside of it. Uh, make my own wheels. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about welding this up. I think it's going to be protecting the lip for a long time. I like that there's a little bit of height here. It kind of gives you notification when you're driving in to make sure that your wheels aren't going to fall in the pit. In case you got off center. And also it prevents any rushing in water. If we were to have a flood, then none of it would go just directly in the hole. It would all divert out away from it and give us a little safety net of about a one inch rise. Yeah, and just remember like, this isn't a how-to channel, this is more of a what if channel. What if you set this metal with mortar? Maybe not you should do this, but come back and check with us in about a month or two and let's see how it's doing. What if you did it this way? Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this video. We'll see you on the electrical install. We appreciate all your support. Stay on the journey with us and we'll see you on the next video.